It's Ron Brown with Tech for Seniors. Today I'd like to talk to you about how wearable technology will improve your health in 2021. Now I have a big announcement for you, so please stay tuned until the end of the video. Let's get on with it. Now if you like this video, please click the like and subscribe. It really does help us with the channel. Thanks so much. Let's get on with the show. Most of you probably know me from Tech for Seniors, but in another life, I was actually a physician and uh, I looked after people for about 35 years. So about three years ago, I decided to make a presentation on saving your life with wearable technology. It went over pretty well and I've given it this presentation to over a hundred different clubs and organizations. Uh, it was so popular I did part two and this year because of the changes I'm going to talk about today I will be doing part three. I've had many testimonials from people email me or writing me back saying that they followed my advice in the video and it saved their life or prevented serious medical complications. So it's a good video. You should watch it and I'll uh, drop the uh, link in the show notes. Let's look at the changes that are occurring in 2021. Now this is a slide I used in my 2019 presentation. In this slide, I want to point out that wearable technology is big business. It is a lot of money is uh, going to be spent on wearable technology. And there's two things in this slide I want you to look at. This was a slide that indicated the wearable technology shipments for the third quarter of 2019. And there's two things, that, two takeaway messages. The first is uh, that although smartwatches are popular, the Earwear actually was 40.7% 40, 40 and the smartwatch volume was 17.6%. And this is of all shipments of uh, those devices, not just with Apple, but worldwide. But the most important thing I want you to look at is the total shipments in that quarter was 84.5 million, um, million devices. All right, now let's look fast forward to today. And this is a different slide, but this is the fourth quarter of 2020. And I want you to look at the bottom of the graph here, and you'll see that the total number of shipments now are 153 million, doubled in two years. Now, in the graph, you also see that Apple now is uh, about just over half of all worldwide shipments of wearable technology. Now Apple doesn't divide it out into um, doesn't divide it out into um, earbuds versus watches, but they did indicate in the article that about fifty percent of the sales of their wearable technology were related to their watches. So it is big business. These devices perform many tasks, but in this short video today, we're going to focus on cardiac monitoring, specifically electrical problems within the heart. Now your heart has a main electrical trunk line coming in that provides power to the heart. And just as in your house, it has a circuit breaker panel. In fact, your heart has two circuit breaker panels. So in this diagram, you'll see the main trunk line coming in to the first circuit breaker panel. Now, this panel can actually fail as you get older. Just like you need, you have your eyes and you have cataracts, you have joint replacement, you get your um, knee and your hip replaced, this particular circuit breaker can fail. Now if it fails in the closed position, you don't get any electrical impulses to your heart and it stops. This is a slide that shows a terrible accident where people were killed. And in this situation, probably what happened is the driver was driving along and lost consciousness. This is an example where your heart slows to a very, very slow rate. And guess what? 
you might need a pacemaker to keep it going. What is the incidence of this happening to you? Well, if you look in the slide here, you'll see that if you are over the age of 60, and you look at this graph, you'll see the incidence of pacemaker 1 failure in the over 60 age group. And look at the graph going up. Let's go back to the diagram again. Let's take a look at our circuit breaker. What happens if it fails in the open position? Then your heart speeds up and it goes too fast and you may get into a situation such as this which is atrial fibrillation. Atrial fibrillation is a major cause of stroke. Let's look again at the diagram here and you'll see again if you are 60 you'll see look at the graph of the incidence of atrial fibrillation. It is the same graph. So it is so important to know if your heart is going too slow or too fast. And the three smart watches we're going to mention today all have cardiac monitoring enabled. And these will actually all be approved by the FDA as a level two medical device. Let me explain this. Um, if you look at the devices we're going to talk about today, uh, they've had to go through stringent requirements and be approved as a level two medical device with the federal FDA. Now this means it's the same as if you had an anesthetic machine or an ECG in a hospital. These all have been certified to be able to uh, measure your pulse and detect atrial fibrillation. If you look at the second item on the slide, you'll see blood pressure recording. Well, the Samsung Galaxy 3 watch actually can measure your blood pressure. Not quite in the United States yet. It's been approved in South Korea and it is on the approval waiting list in the United States, which should be um, this summer approved. So you'll be able to measure your blood pressure. Again, this is an FDA approved device which measures accurate blood pressure. Now fall detection and oxygen sensing are not FDA approved. In fact, there's no regulation or standards on those. So that makes the results very suspect. But the big announcement today is diabetic blood sugar monitoring on your watch. This is huge. And it's really gonna change the way we look at these devices. Right now, the big imp Put for these devices is through industry. One of the concerns that I've had is patients tell me uh, that have got these devices, they go to their doctor and the doctor says, what? What is this? They don't understand the technology because this technology is being driven by industry. When we move into the next phase of these watches, which is going to be extremely popular with bloodless blood sugar monitoring, you're gonna see this will be an integral part of diabetes management and also will be incorporated very quickly into the medical education program that we teach doctors. So let's have a look at this. Now these are the three smart watches that do cardiac monitoring and have been FDA approved. Uh, Apple has been out of the gate first with the Apple Watch. This has been uh, available for cardiac monitoring since uh, Series 4. They're now in Series 6. Apple is truly committed to the global market. And they have gone to all the countries around the world and have had the software for cardiac monitoring approved by the equivalent of the FDA. Clearly, they are the leaders. But the amount of money being spent now is so huge Samsung and Google are coming up pretty quick. The second watch is uh, for, with cardiac monitoring is made by Samsung and this is the Galaxy Watch 3. This watch is a great watch but has had problems because of course when it was initiated it was launched into the United States uh, the uh, cardiac monitoring hadn't been approved by the FDA. Today in the news there was the leaked document and the Galaxy Watch 4 will be released this year and it will indeed have cardiac monitoring, blood pressure monitoring, and blood sugar monitoring all pre-approved and ready to go out of the box. Pretty interesting and it just came out this morning. 
The third watch with cardiac monitoring is the Fitbit Sense. Now, as you probably remember, Fitbit was bought last year by Google for $2.1 billion. And they're really changing the Fitbit line of uh, watches into health monitoring devices. Again, this is a really big business, so you're seeing big changes occur. This is the watch that I own. I did uh, a video on this called the Misunderstood Fitbit Sense. And the reason is, is because this philosophy on this watch works a bit different. I didn't like it initially and was going to take it back and get my money back. And then when I realized how it does work, it's fine. And I made this video that has had just under 20,000 views. So these are the three watches that have cardiac monitoring. And let's look at what's coming up. So this is an article that came out on the wire service in January of 2020, a little over a year ago. And this was a research article on a group of people from the Samsung Advanced Institute of Technology, or SAIT, and the Massachusetts Institute of Technology, or MIT. And this group of people was able to use a piece of equipment to measure blood sugar without touching any bodily fluids. They were actually able to measure it through the skin. No body fluid contact. Never been done before. I immediately knew the significance of this article. This is going to change the way we practice medicine. Watch what's going to happen now. They use this piece of equipment called a Raymond spectroscopy to measure blood sugar accurately through the skin without any contact with bodily fluid. Well, it's just a matter of time before you can take this piece of equipment and you can make it smaller and fit it into a watch. And I predicted that this would take about a year or two and you're now seeing that it's coming. Both the Apple Watch Series 7, which is going to be out this year, has strongly been rumored that it's going to be bringing its blood sugar measuring um, capability. And of course, the leaked document this morning with the uh, Samsung Galaxy 4. So this is coming. There's also been some patents from uh, no-name brands that are trying to get in as well. So we're seeing a lot of activity. And I am so excited because this is going to change the way we manage diabetes. Let's look at that. So let's look at the staggering costs of diabetes. There are 30 million Americans with diabetes. And the cost of this is $327 billion. So let's look at this closely. All right, let's look at the costs on this. The cost of diabetes monitoring with testing strips is about $1,000 a year. Diabetics have to measure their, uh, their, their blood sugar with uh, glucometers, which involve testing strips. Then there's the initial purchase of the machine. Now, if we look at this about, let's, let's look at 30 million people, and you have 1000 about $1,000 a year for 30 million people, that's $30 billion in that year. Now, remember, these are consumable items, and that is, over a three-year period, going to be what I calculate as $90 billion. Let's look at the, let's, just, let's take the Apple Watch as, as our diabetic, man, diabetic management, and that would be $400 for 30 million people, and that's about $12 billion. Now, that's going right into Apple, right? And... And, but that's a fixed cost over three years. So if you take uh, 90 over a three-year period, what's the cost to the insurance company and the general public? If you take 90 minus 12, there's a savings of $78 billion. This truly is the holy grail. Now, I'm an old guy. Um, when I graduated from medical school, we didn't have glucometers. We measured diabetes by measuring your urine, or we did uh, occasionally we did finger prick to measure your blood sugar. I saw the whole technology of glucometers come in. First of all, we only use them for very severe cases, and then they became a gold standard for the treatment of diabetes. This is what we're dealing with now 
with the new technology for measuring uh, blood sugar with your with your watch and it's uh, it's a pretty exciting time and it's going to make a big change in how we practice medicine and certainly um, for those people making the equipment it's going to make people a lot of money it's the holy grail it's ron brown with tech for seniors how wearable technology will improve your health in 2021